Thank you very much. So just to recall, so my, my first goal is to, to show this stable manifold theorem. And the first main technical ingredient is this uh, plaque family theorem, which works for uh, more generally uh, once you have a domain, dominated splitting. So in the first uh, step, we lifted F to uh, a diffeomorphism of uh, that form in a small ball around the origin and going with the differential on the complement. Okay. And why do we do that? Do that is because we want invariance in the end with respect to F on a small uh, ball. So it's and so we want really F and not the differential uh, near the, the origin. But still, uh, cones behave nicely with respect to the differential. So then we glue on the outside. Okay. So that's uh, the first step. Second step is to consider this space of Lipschitz graphs tangent to the cone ten, uh, CE. <clears throat> And uh, as we saw, uh, so the, the dynamics acts on this space uh, like, like that. Okay, so, so they map Lipschitz graph to Lipschitz graph. But uh, so they, here we need to, to be careful just with the direction of the dynamics just to, to have a good property here. E is dominated, so we have to go backwards. So the uh, third point is to show that not only it acts, but it acts like a contraction to produce eventually some fixed point. Okay, so why why is that? So uh, we are considering f hat inverse, and if we iterate long enough, so uh, let's define uh, capital F hat n to be the nth iterates going backwards. So by what we saw, it goes from L f n x to L x, and it is a contraction. So um, to see that, let's um, Let's take uh, psi one prime, psi two prime, the images by uh, this map of two uh, Lipschitz graph psi one, psi two. So I take those two Lipschitz graph and map it by fn hat to two other Lipschitz graph like that. And contraction means that they should go closer once we apply uh, this map. So just for simplicity, uh, so uh, let's fix uh, a point U here. And we look at its pre images on the uh, pre image graphs. And a priori, uh, they may correspond to different points, but just for simplicity, let's assume that uh, they, uh, they project them to the same point V here, so that U psi i prime U is the image uh, by F and hat of the same V psi i V. Okay, so they, we have the same points here. <laughs> Now, so we are going to uh, examine uh, the images on the horizontal and vertical uh, uh, parts of, of these guys. So first, uh, looking horizontally, so we have V. So V is here. <clears throat> so it's before we apply the map. And naturally, it's on some, uh, it's in the cone CE at n of x, sending uh, its image U here is in the cone CE at x. And those cones are contracting, contracted by uh, the dynamics because we go backwards and E is dominated. Okay. And um, moreover, uh, when we apply uh, this, this guy, uh, so, which is the product of the f and hats, uh, 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 we see that in fact uh, this guy is close to the differential inverse. Okay, so just uh, all those things tell you that uh, essentially uh, what you see at uh, at v is uh, dominated by uh, and is less than the differential uh, of uh, f to the n acting uh, on u. Just because uh, going backwards. Uh, it, it cont contracts uh, the, the codes. Okay. So you have this uh, information that the horizon, horizontal part uh, between the image and, and the, the initial point and its image are controlled in that way through the differential along E, because you are in this C codes. So that's for the horizontal part. So now let's look uh, at the, the, the remaining part. So we have. Um, if we form the difference uh, between 
uh, in two initial guys. So V psi one V and V psi two V. So we produce this vector, which is in the transverse cone. So CF. Okay. And um, uh, same thing uh, in the image. Okay. So there also is in the uh, CF cone at X. But those cones, they are, they are contracted by the inverse of the mass. Okay. So when you go backwards, you have the same um, dual behavior. And uh, so in particular, uh, uh, it means that what we see here is uh, at least uh, essentially the minimal expansion we see along F times the initial distance. Okay, so we are looking at the initial distance, we go backwards uh, to, to that part of the picture, and essentially what we see is the um, expansion along F. Okay, and there's just this uh, error term exponential minus yeah. Okay, so there uh, are these two. Uh, Two uh, inequalities, the bounding the horizontal part and the vertical part. And uh, when I put them together, uh, what I produce is this inequality. Okay, but now it's nice because uh, you see that is basically related to our Lipschitz distance. And this uh, coefficient appearing here uh, will be exponentially small due to domination between E and F from the Nindice splitting. So, what we conclude in the end is that um, indeed the the Lipschitz distance between the image graphs is uh, exponentially small with respect to the initial distance. Okay, so we do have uh, this contraction of the action of uh, this iterate of n f hat on the space of Lipschitz graph. Okay, so now, uh, so we are just looking uh, between uh, f n x and f uh, n x, but uh, we can form the product space. So we we put all those uh, spaces of Lipschitz graph together to be able to deal with the whole orbit at the one time. And uh, we know it with the distance given by the supremum on each part. And then the dynamics of F hat lifts to the, by the product map. So even the Lipschitz graph, you act um, still by the inverse on each uh, component. Okay. Okay. Uh, by uh, what we saw previously, up to taking nth iterate of that map, uh, so it's going to be a contraction because this contraction we, we got there is uniform uh, with respect to the point. So um, this uh, product map is is going to be a contraction after iteration. In particular, uh, it has a unique fixed point uh, in this space, which I'm going to denote by psi and uh, f kx for all the coordinates. Okay, so now uh, looking at this uh, product dynamics, we have produced a good candidate to be our embeddings. So we may define them as follows. So take your space ex, which you want to embed into this tab. Um, and what you do is, so you look at the graph, but the graph was living in tangent space. All of this was uh, in tangent space. So, we take this, this graph in tangent space and we map it to the manifold by the exponential. So now we have our candidate of embedding. Let's check that uh, we do have this local invariance. So why, why is it the case? It's uh, exactly by the definition of our lifted dynamics because uh, locally, it's an exponential chart. The lifted map F hat is the same as F. Okay. So when um, I mean, just doing the computation, if you look at the image of by A of your embedding, so there we need to take delta as well small enough so it works well. But uh, by definition, this embedding is essentially the graph of psi restricted to the, the ball of radius delta naught. But um, so there I'm, I'm using the definition of f hat on this small ball. We know it coincides with that, that map. So I replace. Um, F of exponential by exponential by F hat. Okay. But now uh, F hat uh, preserves these graphs because I'm um, the collection of graphs because of the very construction. So this graph is mapped to the graph at Fx. And then uh, we still have to map by exponential of Fx. So it's exactly uh, uh, the embedding at the next guy. Okay. So we do have this. Invariance of the plaques which we constructed. Okay. So now um, 
we still need to, to show uh, that those plugs uh, vary uh, nicely and that they, they are the C1 manifolds, okay? So uh, for that, in fact, we use uh, still the cone field uh, criterion. So we have uh, cone fields for the maps F hat, okay? So in particular, I mean, these maps live in uh, tangent space. So uh, for each, um, for each U in tangent space, you have a splitting uh, coming from the, the cones, okay? And those uh, two uh, directions correspond precisely, so E hat U corresponds to the vector whose iterates under this maps uh, stay forever in the cone CE, okay? If you look at all the iterates uh, forward and backwards, and same thing that the other direction is the same uh, behavior, but with respect to the cone CF. So we we identify those directions as in, being invariant when you look. I mean, those uh, directions we stay in the cones forever. Now, um, so the graphs which we produced were only ellipses, but uh, let's show that they are actually C one <coughs> with this thought. So um, just being ellipses, we know that they are differential almost differential almost everywhere, and. Uh, that they are, uh, have a tangent space uh, in the cone C E F K X because the the because of the construction. Okay, so they, the uh, when they are differentiable, we know that uh, the tangent space has to be there. Okay, but um, so we have a tangent space at, uh, in uh, this direction he had U, but uh, by the the, the the, the fact that those uh, directions were produce, produced through our cone field criterion, the limit, I mean, these directions depend continuously. So the, I forgot to put in the uh, result about cone fields, but the, the directions which we produce are going to vary continuously. So those directions depend continuously on the point. And uh, so at any point where we have a tangent space, that they are going to live there. So it means that. Uh, not only there are ellipses, but there are C1. Okay, so um, uh, this uh, this concludes with the C1ness of the invariant of the plaques which we produced. And uh, also that uh, uh, if we were tangent to E hat uh, uh, everywhere, then when you look just at one, you, you fix one point in that correlation, for example, k is equal to zero, it tells you that the embedding which we produce is going to be tangent to Ex, which is because uh, those cones project to Ex. And this direction projects to Ex at uh, k equals zero. Okay, so um, that's for uh, the, the fact that the, the plaques which we produce are C1. And uh, <clears throat> there, there was one remaining point. So we saw. Uh, that uh, um, we saw that invariance property it remains to show continuous dependence with respect to the point in C1 topology. So it comes from the construction because it's a, uh, it's a dynamical construction. So we, if, if we change slightly the point, it's, it's not going to produce very different graphs. So that's the idea. Just so um, by the construction, we know that uh, the psi x is going to be a fixed point by this uh, by these lifted dynamics, and uh, in particular, if um, uh, we take psi prime arbitrarily in this space uh, after a large iterate, so if n is large enough, the image by this map of psi prime is going to be a good approximation of uh, the fixed point. Okay, so if we do now this starting at the point x prime close to x. Okay, so now you take the fixed point at x prime to be uh, what we we start with uh, with pi psi prime. Then it tells you that after any iteration, uh, that that graph has become very close to the fixed point for x. Okay, so in particular, it means that uh, those two graphs are close to each other. So if you fix n very large, uh, they are very close. So in going in the limit, they are have this problem. Okay, so that's uh, basically the end of the proof of the uh, plaque families. And uh, now let's go back to uh, uh, the stable manifold theorem. So how can we apply this uh, result to produce the stable manifolds? 
So now uh, we have to, to impose further that uh, not only we have a splitting, but we have a partially hyperbolic splitting that the first component is uniformly contracting, and the second one we don't know, but it's dominating the first one. Then, uh, in particular, it is uh, dominated splitting. So it, uh, we have these plaques given by the previous theorem. Okay. And uh, so our candidate to be the local manifold, stable manifold, is just the, the local plaques which were produced for this splitting. Okay. <clears throat> so let's define that. And then, uh, so we have three properties um, to show. Uh, so the diameter. Uh, of those plaques when you apply the dynamics is going to, to be contracting contracting uh, exponentially. Okay. So it means basically that so you have your plaque and not only you have this uh, property that you are mapped to uh, you have this invariance, but in fact you have much better that you have a, the whole plaque is uh, mapped into itself, and eventually it becomes very, very small. Okay. So the, 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 the plaques are going to be forever in the, the image of the plaques are going to be forever in the plaques which you constructed in the decay exponential rate. So if you are able to show that, in particular, so this will prove that we have a forward invariance of the local uh, manifolds and uh, the global manifolds which we are defining previously. So I recall you, W S of X was defined like that. Okay, so the points which go closer to each other in the future than they would go in the center direction. Then um, this global stable manifold is the union of the pre images of these local manifolds which we construct. So let's show those three points. So the 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 first. Uh, First uh, one is actually just uh, the plaques which we consider. Uh, so if we consider a small enough neighborhood of the origin within them by con by construction, the uh, I mean the action uh, and just the, the the dynamics there looks very much like the tangent dynamics, and the the tangent dynamics um, tends to contract uh, along uh, the stable direction. Okay, so uh, the, the first point is just uh, proved by uh, induction. Okay, because the first step we only make you closer, and once you are closer, then uh, the next one will be again closer and closer. So uh, you have uh, even um, better and better control on, on the contraction of this disk uh, through the differential. Okay, so once you have that, then as, as I was saying, uh, B follows. So the, we will be trapped in our family of plaques forever in the future. And last step, so we have the two incl inclusions to show. The, the first one, so right is including left part, uh, it, um, it follows from that part and the definition, because if, uh, if you remember, the definition of stable manifold was we contract uh, more than what we see on the uh, center part. And here, uh, we contract essentially as much as the st stable part. It means that we are indeed in the local, uh, I mean, in the stable manifold as different previously. So, um, so you have this inclusion, so it remains to, to conclude uh, to show the other inclusion. <clears throat> and that part is a different argument, is what, uh, what's called the co coherence argument. Saying that the plaques uh, which we produced, they, they behave uh, um, uh, nicely. That, uh, for example, a priori, the plaques which we produced may behave like that, that you have uh, two points nearby and the plaques may intersect like that. And in fact, it's not happening. They, they are either disjoint or uh, they coincide. So, why is that? So, let's start with the point X. Uh, and so we have two two different manifolds that are living close to to X. The, the I mean the stable set, which may not be a manifold, but this, this stable set uh, defined as previously. And you have the, the local stable uh, guys which you constructed uh, with the plaque families. So we have those two things, and a priori they may be different. 
So let's take Z in that uh, stable space and Y in the local space. And uh, if they are not the same, then we may form, uh, I mean, considering uh, starting with Z uh, and following some cone tangent to the center space, we'll end up uh, on the other side to a point Y. Okay? So we, we have uh, this triangle, dynamical triangle there. <coughs> And the idea is to push it by the dynamics and compare the size of the triangle. So let's look at how they change dynamically. So the first one, x to y, how it changes. Then uh, it, it's coming from our previous estimate because it's the tag families which we just constructed for which we had this estimate. So essentially, the decay, I mean, the distance is decaying as fast as the stable uh, contraction up to this. Uh, Small uh, error. Okay. So that's the first uh, leg here. The leg connecting X to Z. I mean, then we just take the definition of stable space uh, given uh, above. So then it should be uh, contracted uh, uh, more than uh, along the center direction. Okay. So X to Z after any iterations are controlled in this way. Why? Uh, those two points, uh, I mean, the, they lie in the uh, center cone. So there, it should be the, the con converse that they should grow more, more or less uh, as fast as the center um, grows. Okay. So there we have this lower bound on the distance between the images because we are lying in these center cones, which are contracted in the future. Okay. But now we start seeing uh, some incompatibility because uh, two sides are very small. So this one is, is essentially as small as center, the stable contraction. This one, uh, in fact, uh, that was um, uh, epsilon can be fixed, um, uh, provided that it's small, small enough. I mean, we can take uh, uh, this epsilon fixed. And there, if we take um, uh, the, the, the points very close, then uh, uh, this could be made as small as we want. So uh, uh, I put just epsilon over two here, but I could have taken epsilon uh, uh, over 100. So essentially, we see this center uh, center expansion, which uh, here, uh, so the, it means that after uh, we mapped by F to the N, this size is much larger than the other two, which is impossible. Okay. So uh, it means that, in fact, uh, those two objects which, uh, so which we define here and we produce there are the same. So locally, the strong stable manifold is this plaque which we construct. So this, uh, this ends the proof of the stable manifold theorem. So we have this uh, general plaque family which you apply here uh, together with this covariance argument to show this, uh, this invariance. Uh, <coughs> Forever, by the end. Okay, so that's the, the end of the proof of the stable manifold theorem. So in in the rest of my time, I want to focus on another part which I mentioned uh, in, in the introduction, namely the absolute continuity. Which and so basically is the two uh, key technical parts for the the proof of ergodicity, which I want to give uh, tomorrow. So this second step. Um, so uh, let me just recall again some uh, some related notions. So as before, uh, smooth compact manifold, um, and uh, we take um, certain uh, I mean, a foliation on our manifold, uh, uh, and those uh, so uh, foliation charts uh, U, and um, we can define the uh, Holland map. So what does it mean? So, holonomy map is as follows. So, we have our foliation uh, horizontal here, and uh, holonomy map is given to uh, transversal L1 and L2, transversal to our foliation, uh, say at points P and uh, this image here. Then, the holonomy is the map which takes a point on the first transversal and bring it to a point on the second one following the leaves of our foliation. So in local coordinates, this may just be written uh, uh, by that. So basically, once you straighten <coughs> your foliation to horizontal foliation, just uh, takes you to 
to the point as is exactly the same uh, level uh, on the other side. Okay, so that's, that's the local randomly map. And uh, we can have a related notion to absolute continuity, which is the so-called transverse absolute continuity, which is uh, the property uh, of the holonomy map to be absolutely continuous. So namely, uh, <clears throat> here we have a smooth manifold L1 there as well. So we may just restrict the remaining volume to each of those leaves and look at uh, whether the, the map H is absolutely continuous with respect to that. So uh, if it's the case, then we say that the, the Fourier chain is transversely absolutely, absolutely continuous. So this would hold for any pair of transverse manifolds uh, uh, L1, L2. In particular, uh, if that holds, then uh, uh, we, we can write the measure uh, of a, a projection by holonomy. So, so uh, if you start with a measurable set A living here, we can look at its image on L2 by holonomy. And the measure of its image is just going to, to be the integral uh, uh, of certain uh, Jacobian uh, on, uh, on, uh, on our space A, on living there. Okay, so that's transverse absolute continuity. And it's actually what you are going to show to show absolute continuity. Indeed, uh, when you have a foliation which is transversely absolutely continuous, it is absolutely continuous. Okay, so uh, uh, let me give a, a proof of that. So, uh, so we start with a foliation chart for, for W and we fix a transversal L. So our my foliation is the horizontal one as previously, and I take a transversal L here in black. And um, <clears throat> uh, to, to prove that, we are going to use a smooth uh, foliation, uh, which is uh, going in the other direction, which extends basically the leaf L. Okay, so we take a uh, foliation GU such that the leaf of this foliation uh, at X is precisely this transversal N. So we have this transverse smooth uh, G foliation. Okay, so in particular, as it is smooth, then we can just rectify our foliation and by, by Fubini, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be uh, absolutely continuous and also transversally absolutely continuous. So we have these nice properties for the smooth foliation, and we are going to use them to show absolute continuity for the initial W foliation. Okay, so uh, initially I'm going to you know, by small g in the densities for g, and densities in terms of absolute continuity. So now, <clears throat> um, just, um, uh, just by Fubini, okay, so uh, what we do is uh, here uh, we take the transversal to be the, the leaf of W through X, which is a smooth transversal. And uh, we are going to let Y vary. So we, we fix W of X, and we, we write the measure using uh, of our set A uh, with respect to this transverse smooth foliation. So, uh, by the fact uh, that uh, it's uh, absolutely continuous, and I wrote small g the, the densities, the, the measure of the set is just um, the, the that thing. So first, <clears throat> so you have a product measure, uh, uh, so on the, the initial leaf and the, the transverse leaves, and uh, just integrate the. Um, this function uh, multiplied by the density. Okay. So that's that's just uh, by Fubini for this smooth uh, foliation. And um, um, so we want to, to transform this expression into something involving uh, instead the W foliation to get absolute continuity. So that's the idea. We will perform certain change of uh, variables in that expression. Uh, change the order of integration and produce something which, which will give absolute continuity. So let's first look at the uh, inside integral. So we want to transform this uh, into an integral on the initial leaf. So there I was uh, letting y vary. So x is fixed, 
and I was letting Y variant is unstable leaf uh, and taking all the transverse leaves. But uh, uh, so what uh, I can do is uh, project everything back to the initial leaf using holonomies for this smooth foliation and rewrite the integral. But this, uh, these holonomies are C1 because our foliation G is C1. And uh, so uh, when I do that, I just see the Jacobian of the uh, polynomy map H. Okay, so I transform this integral uh, on the leaf uh, through Y into uh, um, integral on the fixed transversal L uh, just by this change of variables using the Jacobian of the polynomy. Okay, so that uh, so we have transformed the, the inner part into an integral on L. Now uh, the, uh, the the measure of A is the integral on W U X uh, and then the integral on L. Okay, so uh, uh, I, I want to change the order of integration. So replace this initial integral with uh, first integral on L and then integral on W of X. Okay, so that's just the formula which we we got. Uh, there integrated uh, over the transversal L. No, the, uh, the W of X. So that's uh, that's what we obtain. And now uh, we want also to to use the fact that uh, the the foliation W, which we started with, is uh, transversally absolutely continuous. So there uh, we can. So sorry, sorry. You said that the holonomies are C one. Yeah, because uh, H is the only for uh, G. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I missed yeah, that. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm it's sorry. There. Yeah, no, it's, it's there that I, I have the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Just there, uh, indeed, you are. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, H is the only along the leaves of W, which is not C1, but still we know that they have a Jacobian because yeah. we assume that they are Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, sorry. This uh, this works, but it's just uh, we have to replace uh, uh, what I said, just uh, coming from the definition of transverse absolute. <coughs> then, um, on the other hand, since the, the transverse pollution there is C1, we also know it's. Uh, uh, transversely absolutely continuous. So the, if we denote by H bar, the only map there, uh, it has going to well, Jacobian J bar. And there again, I want to um, um, to, to project uh, WUX to WUS. So I want to, to, to go on different uh, level here uh, by the only map H bar. <coughs> Uh, so, um, uh, so the, the integral of W yeah, the W of X, I replace it with the integral of W S with its uh, polynomial map, and uh, um, and uh, so I produce this formula, and uh, there, uh, so it appears this Jacobian, uh, which is now the Jacobian of the smooth polynomial. Okay, so now uh, we have to change our uh, integral on Wx to an integral on Ws. So finally, putting this expression back to, to that formula, we get this integral here for the measure of uh, the set A, which we started with. And uh, we do see that it writes um, well in terms of the uh, Romanian volume on the leaves of the solution W. Okay, so that's uh, basically the, the, the proof that uh, we start uh, we we play with uh, another foliation transverse to the initial one, which is uh, which will have uh, a nice Jacobian, and we use that Jacobian to produce the density for the for the absolute continuity of uh, the foliation W. Okay, so that's why uh, uh, transverse absolute continuity implies absolute continuity. So uh, in the remaining part of the lecture today, uh, we, want, we will show that the stable foliation which we produced before is uh, transversally absolutely continuous, hence absolutely continuous. And these notions are not equivalent. 
No, 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 no. There are examples uh, that may is stronger, strictly stronger. Okay, so um, the the basic uh, idea for for the proof is to uh, replace uh, the so just uh, yeah to give an outline of, of the proof of the transverse absolute continuity. The, the idea is to replace the, the, the stable foliation with a better one, which is a, a smooth. So that one will be transversely continuous. And uh, the idea is to, um, to compare, uh, to, to, bound, um, to have a dynamical construction so that the, uh, we iterate this smooth foliation by the dynamics to get closer and closer to the actual uh, stable foliation. And uh, when we do that, to show that the Jacobians of the the image of the foliations are, are going to have a uniform bound. Okay, so if you show this uniform bound, then uh, it will produce in the, going to the limit some candidate to be the Jacobian uh, to check the transverse absolute continuity of stable foliation. So that's the, the idea. <clears throat> so the, the one technical step is just to show that um, when we have a smooth foliation and uh, you lo work locally, uh, then you have a the Jacobian can be made as close to one as you want. So the, the thing is, I mean, just to, to say what's this uh, result about, just saying that if you have a smooth uh, distribution, so uh, distribution, uh, I mean, locally, just straight lines, say, and you take the holonomy map following these lines from one transversal Q1 to another transversal Q2. So what's this result about is if Q1 and Q2 are transverse enough uh, to uh, the distribution. So the, that's this, uh, what's this uh, chi quantifying? Okay, so it, there, there shouldn't be two tangent to, to the, uh, and Q1 and Q2 shouldn't be two tangent to E, uh, e hat. Okay, and uh, if the, these transversal are close enough to each other, so the tangent space uh, should be very close and uh, X and this image there should be uh, close enough. So delta should be very small, while xi can be uh, anything just uniform. <clears throat> then uh, taking delta small enough, we, the Jacobian along the leaves of this distribution uh, can be made arbitrarily close to one. So just uh, it's, it's a, a computation that let me give uh, the details. So. Um, the, the thing is that if you want to bound the Jacobian, it's uh, only affecting, affected by what's happening on the tangent level. So we can replace, in fact, Q1 and Q2 with the tangent space, essentially. So we have everything uh, straight now. <clears throat> and uh, we perform a linear change of coordinates just to normalize everything. So let's, let me draw the picture. So X is just the origin. The uh, uh, tangent space to through Q1 uh, becomes the horizontal line. So sorry, I should have done the other way with the picture, but uh, uh, it's B is equal to zero. Uh, uh, the distrib um, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so that's uh, zero B not. Uh, so the, the image uh, for the reference point X is just uh, on the vertical line at a certain height V0. And um, V0 is very small, uh, as small uh, as the distance between those two things, so basically delta. And uh, the tangent space at uh, Q2 is, uh, is a bit uh, tilted. But not too much. I mean, just... Uh, uh, it depends on this uh, psi, uh, uh, psi which you fixed. Okay, so now we look at that picture. Okay, and uh, in particular, uh, the, the stable distribution starting at W. So there we have a straight uh, thing uh, parameterized by a certain matrix A. Uh, vanishing at the origin, yeah, because just the is vertical line. Okay. 
Okay, so that's basically the, the, the picture where you have linearized everything. And if you want to look at the image of W after we follow uh, <clears throat> the holonomy, so we reach a point there. So we have to uh, intersect uh, this, uh, what's the replacement of Q2 in our coordinates, so this thing, okay, with uh, the line to uh, W naught, which was uh, that guy. So we have to take the intersection of, of those two things. And to bound the Jacobian is enough to produce uh, an estimate on the derivative of uh, the image uh, and, uh, U with respect to the W which we fixed. Okay. So that's what we, we do. So we have to intersect those two things. So we plug uh, the second expression into the first one to, to show that the solution should satisfy this equation depending on W. Which is the parameter which we fixed. Now, if we differentiate, we just get that formula. And uh, but we are interested in what's happening close to the origin. So, uh, looking at this derivative at uh, w is equal to zero, a lot of terms vanish because u is equal to zero there, and uh, a vanishes at zero. So that part is going to vanish. So in the end, we just get that. Okay. And so that is exactly what we wanted because uh, that that point. Uh, is uh, uniformly uh, controlled and W0 is basically is as small as we want, basically uh, because it's of size delta. Okay, so that say that once we go to the determinant, uh, the Jacobian is going to be arbitrarily close to one. So it's just a technical point, but <clears throat> so it is it's just going to be used uh, once uh, we look very close uh, to uh, our foliations. So now let's conclude uh, the proof of absolute con transverse absolute continuity of, of uh, stable foliation. So it's what you are going to, to show. So uh, just uh, to fix the constants. So uh, here I'm assuming, uh, so uh, I work with, uh, uh, I'm in the hyperbolic case, but that could be uh, adjusted exactly in the same way in the partially hyperbolic case, but just to, to fix the probability constant, so I know by lambda the construction in the stable part, and mu the expansion in the unstable part. <clears throat> and as I was saying, the idea to produce the transverse absolute continuity property is to uniformly uh, to to approximate the enemy maps with uh, maps which have a uh, Jacobian which is controlled uniformly. Okay, so uh, to do that, what we what we do is. Uh, uh, we want to replace the stable distribution, which may not be smooth. I mean, it's the whole point that uh, stable and unstable distributions are not always smooth, and typically they are not. In some cases, they may be, but uh, we don't want to use that. So <clears throat> we want to replace this dynamical distribution with another one, which is smooth. Not dynamical, but uh, smooth. And uh, so uh, there is a bit, uh, I'm just uh, uh, what this is just saying is that if we look, uh, so thus by compactness, we have uniform angle between stable and unstable distributions for, for the diffeomorphism, and uh, we have finitely many foliation charts for the stable foliation. Okay, and uh, moreover, uh, we have some uh, uniform uh, transversality. I mean, <clears throat> uh, uh, we have uniform control on the uh, on the holonomies uh, uh, when the transversal is uh, transverse enough to the collision. So looking at local chart, so if L so we have UJ, the coordinate chart, um, <clears throat> We take the transversal, and if it's um, transverse enough to uh, the stable distribution, uh, uh, and uh, everything is uh, happening uh, in a small uh, uh, neighborhood of the fixed point uh, Y, then uh, when we uh, uh, when we follow uh, the 
the distribution B. Uh, so it means that if E is close enough to the stable distribution, then the uh, projection I mean, the only maps for this new distribution uh, will have uh, good control. So you intersect transversely. Uh, you just have one main flow. So it means that when you change the stable to another distribution that close enough, then uh, each leaf uh, of our distribution intersects the transversal in a unique point with a good control. So, so, so just uh, quantify things. But now the, the argument goes as follows. So we start with a, a small coordinate chart for the foliation, for the stable foliation, and look at two transversal L1, L2. Okay, so uh, I denote by H, so we we'll, we'll have different maps. So uh, H is the holonomy map along um, stable uh, the stable foliation between L1 and L2. Okay, uh, and I have another one uh, which is now related with the uh, 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 smooth distribution uh, E hat S. Okay, so H hat is the the uh, holonomy map for uh, E S hat, but after uh, I iterate. Forward for uh, n n steps, okay. and H n um, is the the pre image by um, uh, by the dynamics of this this map. Okay, so basically H hat is, uh, it uh, it goes uh, from F n of L one. Okay, so it's a certain point F n of x. It maps it to the image uh, of that point on F n of L two, following the leaves of E at E hat s. Okay, so we we go in that uh, uh, in that direction uh, up to f n of l two. Okay, so that's what's uh, h hat and h n is uh, the the I mean, the pre image by f to the minus n. So in other words, uh, here everything is uh, on a very small scale because x one and its image which were on the same stable leaf. Uh, they are going to be extremely uh, close to each other uh, after any iterations. So that's uh, some very small scale. And we bring everything back uh, to a map HN here, so which is the image of the smooth phonomy after any iterations backwards. <clears throat> uh, and uh, so now in this picture, we have two anonymous maps, the initial one and the better one, which is HN. So our goal is to show that actually they are very close to each other when N is large. Okay, so um, um, the the point is that uh, the smooth distribution we had, which we fixed, uh, if it's uh, C one close to uh, E S, then uh, I mean uh, in that part that it's going to be as well uniformly transverse to the uh, F n of L one and F n of L two. And then uh, the distance between uh, uh, this guy and that guy is going to be uh, exp exponentially small and as small basically as the stable contraction. Why? Because um, here uh, the points are the points are uh, lambda to the n close essentially because we are starting at size basically one mapped by f to the n, so they became. Uh, uh, as small as the stable contraction iterated n times. Okay. And uh, the blue line is uh, essentially pointing in the same direction as horizontal here. So the, the vertical displacement which you produce here is uh, as small as the horizontal one. It's by this. Okay. So um, that's uh, some estimate here. And now, uh, uh, to, to show some estimate on HN, we need to go backwards and times. <coughs> Maybe let me draw better. So uh, at, after we applied FN, so we have this picture. We have FN of X1. FN of HX1. And h bar of uh, y one, which was uh, 
Yeah, uh, just let me. So that's uh, on the right. <clears throat> and here, so that's basically of size lambda to the n, that's of size lambda to the n. And here, so we have some uh, angle uh, theta, say, um, or maybe theta, well, because theta is used afterwards. But, um, and then we, we go backwards n times. Yeah. So now um, we have to look um, Um, at x1, h of x1, and uh, hn of x1. <clears throat> okay. So um, that's the picture at the beginning. But uh, the angle we had here is, is, is the uh, projective dynamics. And the projective dynamics is saying basically going backwards, everything was close to the horizontal cone, which is a stable cone. So going backwards, we contract these cones. And it will contract these cones as much as uh, lambda over mu. Okay, so this angle here is of size uh, lambda over mu to the n. Okay, so the so this angle here is much smaller than the one we had there. So that's uh, the estimates in terms of the angle. But once you have uh, the estimate in terms of the angle, then since that's basically size one, it means that the distance between Hn and H is of the same order as, as the angle. Okay, so the, that's the, this estimate that the distance between Hn and H uh, at the at here is of, of that size. But uh, it's exponentially small because lambda is. is uh, Less than one and mu is more than one. Okay. So this uh, projective dynamics, when we bring it backwards, it is going to make your anomalies converge closer and closer to the initial ones. Okay. So in particular, uh, we do have that uh, uh, the map Hn converges uniformly to the real volume map H. Okay. So that's uh, basically the, the, the idea that. Uh, uh, if we approximate the stable um, uh, leaves with uh, just a smooth distribution, which is in a stable cone, then uh, by this dynamical uh, construction, so just bringing back uh, the enemies uh, which we have for this new distribution, then they are going to converge uh, uh, to the real enemy map. So that's uh, one nice thing. And then the, the, what remains to be shown is that the Jacobian of these uh, nice things is uniformly controlled. So that's the last step of the argument. And uh, so the, the Jacobians of these uh, good approximations is uniformly bounded, and then you go to the limit and tends to infinity. So uh, let's just, uh, so by the previous estimates, uh, X1 and X2, when we iterate them forward, and they are exponentially close. So we call you that X1 and this guy were in the same stable leaf. Okay, so the uh, X1 and H of X1 are going to satisfy such estimate. But by what we saw, the distance between those two guys in the future is going to be even smaller. The distance between X1 and X2 is uh, decaying uh, as fast as that. Okay, so we have that uh, estimate on the uh, it rates of x1 and x2. <clears throat> and uh, what we want is to uniformly bound the Jacobian of f in the direction of the transversal. Okay. So we, we have um, our transversal, uh, L1 and L2. And uh, I denote by j of fk of xi, the Jacobian in the direction of the <coughs> transversal, essentially. Yeah, that so that's the tangent space at the image point of the image of the transversal, which is fixed. So that, that's uh, uh, what we, uh, so just, just notation. Another notation is uh, denoted by GN, the Jacobian of the map HN, and uh, by uh, J hat, the Jacobian of H uh, hat. Okay, so now uh, this part uses the previous lemma, so we recall you, 
we are just shown that uh, if you look in a very small uh, scale uh, for a smooth foliation and transverse, um, transverse enough to the foliation, then the Jacobian is very close to one. So here is exactly the case because that side of the picture was a very small scale. And you had the, we are following the leaves of this smooth distribution ES hat. So then the, the Jacobian um, uh, J hat is uniformly bounded. Okay. Because everything is a very small scale for a smooth distribution. So we have this a priori estimate. Now, uh, the, the thing we want to bound is Jacobian GN. But by definition, um, GN, the Jacobian, is the Jacobian of this map, which is the composition of these three guys. So it's just chain rule. So the Jacobian here is uh, obtained as, as the product of the Jacobian along uh, pulse x2, pulse x1, and the medal the Jacobian at the uh, of j hat. Okay? Just Jacobian of h hat. Okay. So this middle thing is nice. It's what we were saying that, that it's uniformly bounded. So if you want a uniform bound on GN, it's, it's enough to get a uniform bound on the remaining product. So that, that guy there. But uh, to, to get that, um, <clears throat> so I, I, it's not completely detailed there, but uh, essentially the idea is that, uh, <clears throat> the, so you have two things, uh, is that the, the points at which we, we take uh, the Jacobians are, Exponentially close to each other, but uh, we look also in directions uh, there, which are uh, exponentially close to each other also, because essentially what's happening is that the um, transversal are in an unstable cone, so it's going to be uh, uh, more and more tangent to each other after n iterations at n of q1 and fn of q2 are going to be uh, exponentially close to each other. Uh, I mean, the attention spaces are going to be very close to each other. And uh, uh, so we have this uh, estimate on the, the images of the transversal. And uh, the fact that the Jacobian is uh, ipsis continuous because our map is C2. It, it, it should be enough to have C1 plus at that point, but. Uh, it's um, essentially a from that. Yeah, sorry. Can you explain yes, why you move Lipschitz just and Lipschitz? There is some screwing for you. Maybe for Jacobians, you are successful, but if you just get the renaissance. Yeah, yeah. Here. No, no, exactly. It would not be true, in fact, because we know that in higher dimension, from a long it's more than one dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Why you did not do Lipschitz continuity? Of the the unstable foliation. I mean, the, the fact is that if you, I, I don't know uh, how to adapt this proof, but just uh, to show that uh, in good cases, it's uh, the foliation which we produce is actually Lipschitz continuous or even C1, for example. It's just the same same type of right. It's not. I mean, it, when it's low, low dimensional, it, it is better. If it is one dimensional, but, yeah. then Jacobian and Lipschitz constant is the same number. Yeah, yeah. You have that, or you, also you can do the same type of argument with this graph transform. And there, there, there are some nicer spaces uh, which, uh, which come from certain banishing conditions. When you have a uh, low dimension, and uh, and just transversely, you can, you can have two vectors. Yeah. Both. Yeah. 
large scale, but the angle may change. So yeah. one corresponds to smaller axis and ellipse, and for longer axis, but if we apply one of them, both are extending. Yeah, and just transversally, uh, uh, you don't. Kind of in general, transversely, you have some oscillation. You have some oscillation, so you you will not uh, uh, preserve some. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, um, I think it's quite. Uh, I mean, it's quite different from that proof. If you want to show that, uh, uh, for example, in nice situations, the stable fraction is going to be. C1, you have to turn control. Uh, yeah, to the bunching, which is automatic. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Shrinking to one, well, one product going to the season. Yeah, exponential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the transition. Yeah, it's, I think it's a different argument than that. Yeah. Yeah. But just in principle, if uh, transversely you have more directions, then uh, you don't have a uniform bound. I mean, if you go to different directions, then uh, the Jacobians uh, in different directions uh, may not uh, have uniform bound like, like that. They are used strongly uh, one day. You know, just a uh, um, uh, I mean, to control uh, the, the fact that maybe it's, uh, stable Fourierian would be C1, then you need to control transversely what's happening. But if you have transverse directions uh, with different types of growth, then uh, you have you have, you have some degeneracy happening. Yeah, but uh, we do the, the graph transform. This may not uh, stay in a nice ellipsis space uh, transversally. But uh, sorry, maybe you uh, can keep on this. But just to, to conclude, so we have this uh, Jacobias product of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's a. Uh, Why is the Jacobian successful? Positions, you're not. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it must be that the image of this is an ellipse. It does not mean that image of two orthogonal vectors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, These images have big angles, maybe small angle, and each of them grows much faster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Maybe if you can. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm like, no, just, yeah, it's almost that. Just so we, this middle part is uniformly bounded, so you needed to control that part. And uh, by uh, I think that the, 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 the transversal are going to be uh, exponentially close to each other. And then uh, we look. Um, uh, at points uh, which are also exponentially I mean, close to each other. No, sorry. Uh, just the Jacobian is a uh, Lipschitz. So uh, uh, looking at those uh, exponentially close directions, uh, once you apply the Jacobian, produces something which tells you that going to the log, for, um, for example, those two things are going to be exponentially close to each other. And then you have a uniformly convergent series and, and the uniform bound. So you have this uniform bound, and then how you conclude uh, for the uh, real volume map, you get this, uh, this argument. So by this uniform bound, we know that when we take a measurable subset from 
the first transversal map it by holonomy, then uh, its image has a measure less than fixed constant, which is the bound on the Jacobian times the initial measure on the initial transversal. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, so we're going to, we to pass that to, to the holonomy of the real formation. And uh, so to show the bound for, the, for that, it's enough to, to consider bold instead of general measure uh, sets. So if you look at the small bold in the first transversal, uh, so you know that um, it's image by the true holonomy map uh, will be essentially uh, uh, the same as the image by uh, the uh, HN of the, this ball, okay, up to uh, delta correction. And uh, now we're going to the measure. Uh, so the measure on L2 of that is less than the measure of that. But that, uh, on, on that you have a uniform bound coming from there. Okay. And uh, eventually we go to, to the limit when delta goes to zero, just to, because maybe the ball was mapped uh, to some slightly larger ball, so we have to adjust. We're still going to the limit when delta goes to zero. Then uh, we recover the, the image of the, this ball by homonomy and with uniform control on that, coming from this Jacobian. Okay, so then this ends the proof of transverse absolute continuity for the stable operation, and the same can be done for the stable going backwards. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, for tomorrow, I, I want to, to give the, the proof of agodicity for C2 conservative and result diplomatisms and speak about the table measures. Are there any questions? Not that's thank you, Karen.